Hey there and welcome to Get Indie Gaming. With the Nintendo Switch having stolen gamers' hearts, it's time as we approach the end of 2019 we took another look at the best 10 indie games on the platform. Have things changed much since last year? Let's get straight into the action. At number 10 and one of the console's hidden sleeper gems, Far Lone Sales came out in October 2019 with it offering up a distinctive looking side scroller vehicle adventure game with light puzzle and some platforming sections. While much of the game is spent keeping your vehicle in working order by managing various resources, for example fuel and other things you come across along the road, these resource management elements never feel old or stale and neither do they give the impression of busy work. Every once in a while you come across an obstruction which you clear by way of solving environmental based puzzles and having done so you're back on the road. It's very much a lonesome and contemplative piece. The colour tones and audio really work well with the overall atmospherics of the game. While only a couple of hours long, this is one of the best ways on the Switch to while away an evening. Up next at number 9, Tangle Tower came out only a few weeks before this video was recorded and edged its way into the 10 best indie games on the platform. It's a murder mystery which has elements of Ace Attorney games and Professor Layton. You go about interrogating the folks who live within a tower with the view of finding who's responsible for the murder and in doing so, you unravel a strange and yet totally convincing tale of discovery and intrigue. What sets this one apart on the Switch from other visual type novels? Well it isn't just the story and the interactions you have with the NPCs, but rather how the character animations and voice acting, well they've risen the bar for these that follow to such an extent, this one really feels like it's taken these sort of games upwards from an artistic perspective to a new level of sophistication. Playing Tangle Tower feels like jumping into an animated film where you're able to direct and control what's going on, which it ultimately is. The puzzles are all immersive, as is the narration, and all in, there are times when I forget I was playing a game at all. As we close out the year, I suspect Tangle Tower might find a way into a number of Game of the Year award rundowns. Next up at number 8. A game that will be instantly recognisable to many of you and with it featuring in my 2018 Best of the Switch Games rundown. Stardew Valley is of course heavily influenced by the Harvest Moon series although it builds upon the overall premise. You begin having inherited a plot of land and a modest house in the village of Pelican Town and having done so you're essentially free to go about your business within the game as you desire. After a good few years I'm still ever so happy to dive back into this, particularly of an evening where I find it's one of the best ways of unwinding after a hard day in the office. In all honesty, the perfect few words that sum Stardew Valley up rather nicely in how you speak with the NPCs, go out harvesting crops, go fishing and much much more, well it's all so charming and wholesome and with the game never really finishing, I suspect I'll keep coming back to it indefinitely. Everything gone. Just like that. From the wharf to the wilds. You gotta hand it to the calamity. It did the job quick. At number seven, with it coming out on the Switch toward the tail end of last year. I didn't really get a chance to play it until the summer just gone. While originally out on home PC and while this port doesn't add anything new to the overall package, Bastion is stuffed full of some of the most beautiful isometric gameplay on the platform. The overall art style drips quality from top to tail, with it also offering up some of the strongest options for you to customise your character in any game I've ever played. The combat is also wonderfully put together with the action coming from you at all sides in such a frantic fashion. If you've already played it elsewhere, well you might want to look for something else, although if like me you're new to it, Bastion makes a wonderful home on the Nintendo Switch. At number 6, 
minute from April 2019 plays on the title with it having the twist of killing you off every 60 seconds. While the monochrome black and white graphics and the plinky plonky soundtrack alone together with the Zelda top-down approach to things don't initially seem to cut the mustard, there's a few things going on with Minute that elevate it higher than most. Where Minute shines is how it's gone about the pacing of having you do things you need to do all within the 60 second countdown. The timer really does help focus on where you need to be and what you need to be doing while also giving you a mechanic where trial and error and learning through failure doesn't mean you waste too much time or progress. As a game, it's so respectful of your time whilst playing it. Minute continually surprised me and brought on many a smile as I pressed on through it, all the way through it to the delicious ending sequence which rounds it off almost to perfection. First impressions with Iconoclasts, my number 5 on the Switch countdown can be deceiving. From afar and up close it does seem to be another generic pixel art game, the sort of which we are far from lacking upon the Switch eShop. Any such worries or concerns disappear though soon enough, with Iconoclast being one of, if not the most enjoyable indie platformer to play on the platform this side of 2019. The animations and character designs are exceptionally graceful, as are the combat sections that feel tight and meaty, as is the well put together, subtle and nuanced character upgrade system. I was also deeply impressed with the puzzle elements which at times are fiendishly clever, and once bested saw me punch the air with delight. The story too is another fine aspect and certain sections and elements well, they remain very much with me nearly 20 months after the credits rolled. Even today, it would be easy to let this pass you by, although in doing so, you would miss out on what is one of the most compelling experiences and narrative journeys of any 2D platformer ever made. And now at number 4, Into the Breach has become and remained my go-to tactical turn-based game on the Switch. Like the number one, I've played it almost exclusively in handheld mode, with it being a constant companion on my 45 or so minute bus ride into work. With matches that usually last between 5 and 10 minutes, although sometimes longer, it's easy to pop in and out and lends itself to short play sessions. All that being said, it is a game that also needs intense concentration, with it also offering a fine and stiff challenge. You can lose a battle in the first few moments if you're not careful, and yet, when things go well for you, the victories come with a fine sense of achievement. Into the Breach remains one of the best of its kind, not just on the Switch, but on any platform over the past decade. At number 3, Hollow Knight has hugely grown on me over the past year, and having had a second and third run through it, it's gone up in my estimation hugely for the best games to play on the Switch. During my first run, I found it all a bit of a hard slog, and while stunningly done, I found playing it a little bit of a chore and didn't find it overly endearing. Having gone back to it, well, I find things are much improved in how I've taken with the combat and exploration, and everything all comes together to form a neat and yet still slightly bloated in places overall package. In terms of the challenge and excitement from its boss battles, there's only one other indie game that beats it, and I need to look into the AAA side of things to find something with as much enjoyment and meat on the bone. Having spent time with Silk Song over the summer just gone, I'm super excited to come back to this franchise when it comes out next year, or perhaps more likely in 2021. So at the number 2 position, Celeste came out in early 2018 and made a name for itself almost immediately. Not only do we have a stunningly rendered pixel art with a story and characters of weight, interest and depth, it's also incredibly tough and often requires pixel perfect platforming and the reaction skills of let's say a test pilot. And yet one of the most endearing aspects of Celeste is what the developers have done with this difficulty to uplift the overall access and opportunity for less able players. 
say somebody like me who earlier in the year lost much of the finer motor control in my left thumb. In Celeste, players have the ability to tweak many of the gameplay elements well to make it easier to play. Those still looking for the hard as nail options, well don't worry the standard game gives you that in spades. However, having the ability for infinite health and say longer grab time amongst many others removes any content gatekeeping through this difficulty so more people can play Celeste to a conclusion than usually seen within this genre. Purists will scoff and that's by the by. On the Switch, there's only one other game if offered the choice I'd rather play. And at number one, with this position being unchanged since last year's rundown, Dead Cells is my most loved game on this or any other console. After a nervy launch with issues in how it played, post-release patches have made the Switch my go-to platform to spend time with this classic. With over 200 hours on the clock, most of these spent while mobile on my daily commute, there's nothing quite like Dead Cells for what it does. It's not just the stunningly beautiful pixel art or the gorgeous soundtrack and effects. The real joy for me is from how within it all plays and boy is it a pleasantly addictive experience. All linked within the combat sections and boss battles, all bundled together with a sublime progression system that for me is ahead of anything else you can play in 2019. I'll argue it's also one of those games where you can play it how you choose to do so. There's platforming, there's strategy elements, there's also puzzle-like sections too within the way you adapt your loadout and your character to get the most from how you want to play it. Now I'll admit, early doors it can be quite a frustrating experience with a steep difficulty curve. You'll often find yourself with no way to escape from your attackers. However, as you build your character and become more powerful, things not only get easier but a whole level another fun. This comes from carving your way through the hordes of enemies like a hot knife through butter. I quite honestly can't recommend Dead Cells enough, and if you have yet to play it or don't usually like games in this genre, if you only buy one game from this countdown, then please make it Dead Cells. So with Dead Cells still at the top of the pile for Switch games you should own in 2019, which games on the Switch have you most enjoyed playing? be sure to let me know down in the comments. With next year all set to be another vintage one for the console, be sure to subscribe to stay up to date with all things Switch Indie Gaming and once again, many thanks for watching and I'll see you all again here soon for another video.